Uh, but first, Ruth Goodman has discovered a motor industry pioneer who we think would do very well in Robot Wars. Carl mm. mm. Benz, Henry Ford, names that are connected to the birth of the automobile industry. But did you know that back in the 1920s there was a car that was both designed and built entirely by women? The Galloway car was the brainchild of Dorothy Pullinger, a wannabe engineer who became the first successful female car manufacturer after managing 7,000 women in a munitions factory during the First World War. At this old factory behind me in Kirkcubri in Scotland, Dorothy and her women mechanics set up their very first assembly line. Staffed entirely by women, her company designed, manufactured and assembled 4,000 Galloway cars over an eight-year period. But becoming a successful engineer wasn't easy. Dorothy's father was well-known vehicle engineer Thomas Charles Pullinger, who believed that a woman's place was in the home. Yvette Lecouvet is his granddaughter. I don't think, quite honestly, that my grandfather stood a chance against my mother. <laughs> I think she would have just worn him out. Having proved her management skills in the war, Dorothy's father eventually made her managing director of Galloway Cars. And together, they introduced some progressive work policies, such as installing a swimming pool and tennis courts on the roof of her factory. But more importantly, Dorothy gave women a new kind of future. She believed they could do anything a man could. They had a three-year apprenticeship. You didn't see why that women should be doing the washing and the laundry and the ironing. It's a bit dull. Dorothy's company logo even adopted the colors of the suffragettes. And she also designed everything in the Galloway car with women in mind. And it's innovators like Dorothy who standardise what is arguably one of the most important features of a car, one that we all take rather for granted today. Louise Innes is Principal Curator of Transport at the National Museums, Scotland. Although, for instance, uh, rear view mirrors had been used before. She was one of the first to actually introduce them as standard. So there's an interesting little book written by Dorothy Levitt in 1909, where she suggests taking your mirror off your dressing table and holding it up to see what's going on behind you. Oh my goodness, what behind the wheel? I, I, I... Yes. Some of Dorothy's other design ideas were ingenious for the time as well. She lowered the sort of dashboard so that you could see over it better. Um, the seat, yes, the seat was fully adjustable. The gear stick being inside is much, much easier. You're not reaching outside the car. It was probably with women drivers in mind. By the early 20s, though, men had returned from the war and a woman's place was firmly back in the home. She was told all the time, you're doing a man out of a job and uh, you should do women's work. Dorothy's answer? To start a company that was of little interest to men. A laundry business. She'd found a form of engineering that the men didn't want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and therefore, as a woman, she was free to run it with no interference. Yes, she was, and the men didn't interfere because they'd start with they wouldn't have known what to do. Next time you look in your rear view mirror, Remember that it is innovators like Dorothy Pullinger who made it all possible.